But it is interesting because I feel like, you know, we just covered Halloween last month, right? And we talked about um, really like how a lot of what even we celebrate in Halloween uh, isn't isn't in and of itself inherently evil, right? Like kids dressing up, kids eating candy, like those things aren't evil in and of themselves. There's discernment and wisdom within that, that if you come from certain backgrounds, right? So like there is in some ways, I think with that episode of Pads, this uh, this more pulling people out from from blowing this holiday bigger than what it actually is, right? And I think when it comes to Thanksgiving, most other years, maybe this year it's sticking out a little bit more because of the COVID stuff. But typically I feel like people just kind of like don't really think of a lot of the meaning within Thanksgiving, at least here in the U.S. I say that partly because usually it's like, cool, we get to eat food. But then right after that, like nobody actually wants to spend time with family. Nobody really wants to, you know, like hang out. People want to go like Black Friday shopping or, you know, like they're already. Yeah, yeah. Like they're take, ready to take a nap. Like there's not a lot of this. Like I, I feel like at least you guys can tell me if you're experienced this wrongly. But Thanksgiving typically is more of this like cheesy holiday that's just like, OK, hey, we get to eat a bunch of, you know, turkey and mashed potatoes and other other foods. And then that's that's like Sweet the potatoes. extent of it. You know, I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you think that that's typically the case uh logan I'll, I'll throw it to you what do you think uh, i think it really varies from person to person in regards of like you know people wanting to do thanksgiving and people not wanting to do it because i i worked i used to work retail for uh about six years and so oh, yeah i had a lot of friends that were like i'd rather just not spend time with my family i'd rather work earn some money and and just go eat like jack in the box or something like that they were totally <laughs> content with that yeah. um But like, I know for me personally, I'm a huge family guy and I also have a really bad knack of just not taking vacations and not taking time off. Yeah. And so for me, this is a time that where it it forces me to take a break from work and focus on family and reconnect. And so um, for me, it it means for me, Thanksgiving is a pretty big thing um, in that regard. Yeah, no. And I think specifically for the Christian, kind of like what the title says, why should Christians be thankful as I, I almost feel like we're pulling more from the other way with this holiday whereas halloween it was like hey like not all of this is is inherently evil yes seek it with wisdom and discernment but like let's let's come down from this mountaintop of screaming you know the devil is is within the details of all of halloween with thanksgiving i think there needs to be a pulling of the other way especially as christians to really look at this more as like this is something that's important not just because of this time of year but it, it, as a spiritual discipline thanksgiving should be a part and a mark of of a christian right sure. we should be some of the most thankful people in the world because we have the biggest thing to be thankful for um Definitely. You know, and so I think that 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 kind of goes into this section too. Uh, but Father Einhardt, before or Father, I keep thinking you're gatekeeper, Doctor <laughs> Heels. Is there any other questions that we had so far before we jump into that? Um, no, uh, no direct questions. Okay, cool. So guys, oh, so just, just as a reminder, guys, make sure you do tag me if you have a direct question, so I don't miss it. Yeah, exactly. So let's go into this question then to kind of start this conversation overall. What is Thanksgiving or giving thanks in the Bible? Like, how should we define it if we're starting with kind of the, the basics? Before we go on talking about anything advanced here, just for anyone who might be new, anyone who's watching this later on, what is the best way for us to define Thanksgiving? Uh, not just the holiday, the American understanding, but the biblical understanding of it. Uh, who wants to take this first? Anybody? No one. No, no, right. no one. Nobody. This is why, this is why you got to say right. a name. All right, I will pick Doctor Heels then for it to start. Darn it! I knew I should have said anything. <laughs> um, yeah. So w- when we're looking at biblical Thanksgiving, I did. I did a little bit. Of, I asked you guys. I'm like, did you guys do any research uh, to go in this? And and so I did j- a little bit. Um, and and one of the things I see whenever we see giving thanks in Scripture is it's all almost always in the form of praise. Um, it, it's it's in like giving praise to the Lord. Um, and, and thanking God for something. And so almost every form of, of Thanksgiving we see in scripture is thanking God for his goodness. Um, and so this is something we try to do. I mean, aside from just getting together and eating delicious food, um, like, I'm sorry, I like Jack in the Box, but man, I got to have me some Thanksgiving food once a year, okay? Um, <laughs> and I'm, I'm all about like, uh, all about yams. That's my favorite thing in the yeah. world right there. Okay, anyway, um, it, more than just the food, even more than just um, just 
spending it like even with family. I think that it's, it's something we've got to make like that constant reminder um, that we've got to give thanks to God. And, and you just like you said, like as Christians, we have more to be thankful for than anyone. Um, and, and so, yeah, I think if I'm looking at it from a biblical view of Thanksgiving, I think that every Christian should also use this as a day as a family to go around and thank God for what he's done in your life to thank God for the, the things yeah. that he's done, for the things you've been through, for the things that you face and simply for saving you, right? Um, that, that this has to be a time of year that, yes, we're thankful for, for family and, and possessions and income and, and everything else, but more so than that, we are thankful for God. We are thankful for Jesus and what he did for us on the cross. Um, and, yeah. and that's one thing we try to like incorporate um, even like around Christmas time, we really focus it on Jesus in our household. Like uh, we don't do a lot of the typical, you know, Christmas traditions um, with, with our kids and stuff, but we, we make sure we focus it around Jesus, that we know it's the birth of Jesus. And, and I think that this needs to be a holiday that as Christians needs to be the same is that we focus it on being thankful to God for what he's done in our life and what he continues to do and have it as a time of, uh, of praise and worship. Yeah, so you said kind of the praise and worship of God. That's mm -hmm. that's kind of your starting definition of Thanksgiving. Logan, yes. what do you think? Is there anything you'd want to add on to that? Any other thoughts or insights that you have for kind of this starting uh, base point that we have? Yeah, I think I think Dr. Hills honestly nailed it pretty well. The only thing I can really think of adding in would be uh, it's like a remembering of yeah. of the things that we're thankful for. Um, that you know it, it ties into praising and worship because when you're praising and worshiping you're remembering uh those things where god has come through um but even it's just it's just really just remembering uh and taking stock of what god has done what the blessings uh he has given you in your life and that's pretty much what i would add yeah yeah for sure i agree i think yeah it's it's that remembering that ability to call back on because here like we just kind of said especially it's so ironic how here in the U.S., that the season of thankfulness is followed is is now even preceded by not just followed by, but it's preceded by you know the introduction of new games, new systems. You know, like this holiday season, uh, where where everybody just wants the latest and greatest, right? Whether it's an upgrade for our PC, whether that's a new streaming equipment piece, whether it's a new game, new gaming system, whatever it may be, uh, right? Where there's this desire and of like what we have is not enough you know what we own is not enough and so i think that that desire for more um definitely plays a role in us not being content or not being able to give thanks in uh in what we do have i like how you said it, it's an aspect of remembering because it made me think of um you know the israelites so you have the israelites who are enslaved to egypt right and so the one thing that God or that they keep calling on the Lord for is like, God, just just free us. You know, like once we're free, we'll be happy. God, just free us. Just free us. Just free us. Finally, God does free them. We get that whole story. And the Israelites get to get to, you know, be free from Pharaoh. And then they're like, God, if we just if we just had something to eat, God, just give us food. You know, we just we just want something. And so God's like, OK, and he provides them manna. You know, and then they have the manna and now now that was the one thing that they wanted, you know, the new one thing. And yet that's not enough to satisfy them. Then they be, have a new one thing of like, God, I'm sick of manna. I want something more. And then they get quail. Right. And if you guys recall on that story of what happens there, I think it's in uh, is it numbers like 16, somewhere around there. Um where the Lord gives them quail, but then he actually curses them be for their, for their uh, disobedience and their discontentment, essentially. Um, because I think so much of this world and so much of us in our sinfulness uh, just keeps thinking that the next best thing is what's really going to satisfy us, the next object, the next promotion, the next car, the next, you know, a little bit of money. If I just had just a little bit more and we keep chasing these things uh, and it keeps us from being uh, being content and being able to give thanks in the Lord. But Father Ironheart, let's go to you. Um, do you have anything you want to add on to what these guys have been saying? In terms of like a definition for, for biblical Thanksgiving, sure. um, I think in that regard, I, I, I don't think I have anything to add. I think you guys really knocked it out of the park. You've got a, you've got a good, like comprehensive focusing, like remembering what God has given us and, 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 um, praising God for the things that he's given us. Um, I, I, I thought about, um, I mean, I think we'll, we'll get into this a little bit, but I just, it popped in my mind as, as we were talking, like, 
Paul, when he writes his letters, so often talks about that he's thankful for the churches that he's writing to, mm-hmm. um, even the ones that were a major pain. Right. Um, you look at Corinthians 1, 4, and it says, I always thank my God for you because of the grace, uh, because of his grace given to you in Christ Jesus. And I think of Ephesians 1, 16, um, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. And it's just like the you look at Paul's letters and, and as he writes to these churches and you think about everything that we've talked about, he's remembering these churches. He's, he's thankful for these churches and he's seeing what God has done for these churches. And he's, he's praising God and thankful for the work that's been done in those churches. And I think that that's a great example that we see over and over and over again in the new Testament of someone who's, who's seen God work and is remembering the work that God has done and, and, um, and then giving thanks to god for that and then worshiping him because of that as well yeah for sure that's right on i think paul's a great example of someone who we see again and again right even though most of the time he's writing those letters like you said they're it's horrible situations he's trying to do damage control he's trying to like pull the people of god back from apostasy and from like going down a road of of total chaos and destruction in their lives um yet he does always start and end with i'm thankful for you super interesting Mm -hmm. here um okay is there any questions from chat guys if you have questions or want to comment something uh about this topic and conversation we'd love to hear your input we'd love to wrestle with some of what you guys even have on this just at dr heels but do we have anything right now dr heels um no nothing at the moment okay cool so yeah. let's keep going with this conversation then uh and let's talk about why is it important why would god and why would god give us some of these examples that we see here we kind of mentioned a little bit a few of or lack thereof uh, with the israelites and then with paul in the new testament um but why would god give us this like why is it important i kind of set off the bat that it should be a mark of the christian life um but why do you guys think uh logan i'll, I'll start with you here what do you think yeah um so this actually reminded me of something that my pastor my pastor preached on thanksgiving literally this morning so i was like dude this is so perfect nice. um he had this quote that he said on there uh, about how people who never look to the past with gratitude will find the future is one of progressive thanklessness. Hmm. And, um, and it just kind of makes you think that when you're, if you're never really thankful for anything, you just can't really enjoy anything at all. So if you right. never really take stock of what God has been doing in your past, you're probably not going to be very aware of what he's doing currently or even in the future and where that's going. So um, it's definitely important because I think it helps you just maintain a proper focus going forward in life, uh, yeah. but even currently in life of what God's doing. Yeah, for sure. No, yeah. I think you're right. That's so true, right? That's so, so true. Uh, Father Ironheart, we'll go to you next. Is there anything you want to add on to that? Or uh, for you, what why is this important what examples do we see of it in the bible you kind of already mentioned a little bit of paul but why does this matter to god why should this matter to us yeah i you know i think and and this might not necessarily exactly answer the question but i think it it helps me um establish a thankful mindset um one thing that i had and maybe this is one of those like christian cliche things that people have seen before but when i heard it 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 stuck with me um and it was if you if you had the things tomorrow that you were thankful for today what would you have um and it Hmm. it just i don't know that something that stuck with me for a little bit um because it's like okay what what am i actually thankful for what do i actually like take the time to, to tell God, thank you for giving this to me. Thank you for my family and this, this place that I call a home and thank you for clothes and food and, um, a job and the ministry opportunities you've given me and, and, and for your grace and your son and, and so on and so on and so on. Um, you know, and, and just helping me to take a step back and say, okay, what, what an overabundance of, of blessings that I've been given. And I think in, in the world we're in, in this, the streaming world, the gaming world, I think it's so easy to get caught up in saying, well, that person's got a 3000 series graphics card and I'm stuck with my 
1060 ti i want that or i want yeah um i want a better camera because i see people with a dslr camera and i want this and i want that and i need better lighting and i need better monitors and it just goes on and on and on and on and on and and you lose track of what you have and right and the blessings of of what you what you have um and so that's that's something that that I've kind of lost track of for a while, but, but being reminded, especially because of this episode of being thankful and, and including everything. Um, not just the, you know, when I pray with my three-year-old, thank you for mommy and daddy and my sister and, and all that kind of stuff, but like being genuinely thankful for everything. Yeah. Um, I think there's really like a mentality shift when you begin to walk through all of that and and see all the things that God has truly blessed you with that you don't deserve at all, but he's given you anyway. Yeah. Yeah. It's so true. There's a perspective shift, right? When it comes to this, like you said, and the hard thing is, is we don't always want to experience this. We don't want to be thankful. A lot of the times the world does not curve us in a way it is against the grain of the culture that we live in to be content. Because everything from the ad that you see before your YouTube video to the uh, ads that you get on the side of any article or blog that you read, right? The world is telling you, you do not have enough. You need this to, to complete your happiness. You need the newest iPhone. You need, you know, a PS5. You need whatever it may be. You need it to complete your joy. Um, and so, yeah, I think thankfulness it's why we call it a spiritual discipline because it's something that we need to be practicing and, and it's a discipline. It's something we have to be regularly doing if we want to grow in that and, and continue to get better at it. 